music. Good morning. Welcome to the get together with me, Teacher Monica. When I'm at my house and you're at your house, and we get together and jump into music. Oh, good morning, everybody. Did you know what? Today we're learning all about Italian music. I wonder what Italian music is. Huh. Don't worry, we're going to figure that out. But first, let's say hi to everybody. Shall we get our little rhythm going on our lap like this? Here we go. Good day, how are you? Good to see you, good to see you. Good day, how are you? Good to see you, I know you. Oh, yay! Good day, how are you, dear friends at home? Good how are you, dear Teddy? Oh, and the Bear family, too. Oh, yay! Good day. How are you, dear Polar Bear? And all my little, little bird friends. Good day. How are you, dear folks at the fire? Do you see that? Yeah. I have a little fire over there. And there's a tall tree. You see that? And there's animals there too. I know it's pretty small, but you can use your imagination. I love using my imagination. <laughs> oh, let's say hi again to all the guys. Dear friends at the fire, good day. How are you, dear little birds? Oh, good morning, little birds too. Oh, yay! Good day. How are you, dear moms and dads? Good day. How are you, dear nannies and grandmas and grandpas and brothers and sisters and cousins and friends too? Oh, yay! Okay, oh, oh, and me, the teacher too. I almost forgot about me. <laughs> okay, dokie, okay, dokie. So, um, Italian music. Hmm. What's Italian? You know what? I think before we get into that, let's sing our song. Do you guys have any instruments with you? Maybe you have some maracas or a drum or a xylophone or your own ukulele or a guitar. Any instruments will do. You want to jam along with me? Let's do it. We're going to sing our song. Here we go. We'll sing and dance and smile today, making friends along the way. We're growing together and having fun. And jump into music and jump into music. We'll sing with your dad and sing with your mom. Sing with It's people and music from the place called Italy. Can you say Italy? Italy. And in Italy, they speak a special language called Italian. Hmm. That's like the same word. But did you know, if we say it in Italian, we say Italiano. Can you say that? Italiano. Oh, I love the sound of Italian in Italiano. The country would be called Italy. It's a slightly different accent than the way we say it in English, but essentially written the same way. Mm -hmm. And did you know that Italy is a country in Europe? I wonder if we could find it on the globe. Let's find it on the globe. I'm going to give it a spin. Oh, 
Let's give this little globe here a spin. You know, this is our whole world. Let's see what happens if I spin it. Wow. There's a lot of colors on there, aren't there? Yeah. There's a lot of one color, though. There's, there's a lot of blue. Did you notice that? Does anybody know what the blue part is? The water. That's right. It's the water. There's a lot of water. What about all these colored parts? We've got some purple and pink, yellow, brown, blue, green, orange. What's all that? The land. That's right. That's the land. Most people live on the land. I, I live on the land. Do you live on the land? <laughs> well, maybe you live on a boat, but not very many people live on boats. Most people live on the land, and I live in this pink land called Canada. Can you say Canada? Canada. Do you live in Canada too? I think a lot of you do, but not everybody lives in Canada. No, no, I know that we have friends who live in France. We have friends who live in the United States, which is our neighbor country. This is Canada, United States. But I live, oh, I meant to say that. I live right at the edge of the land and the water in the big city called Vancouver. Can you say Vancouver? Vancouver. But today we are going to Europe. So we're going to fly all the way across here. Fasten your seatbelts. We're going on the plane across the Atlantic Ocean, all the way to Europe. And this is Europe, and I'm going to bring it a bit closer for you because it's a little hard to see from way over there. Okie dokie. So there we have, this is Europe here. And you see this little one here. Oh, where is it? There. It looks like a little boot sticking out into this water here. And this is called the Mediterranean Sea. And this orange one here, is Italy. Mm -hmm. And did you know that it is quite warm and humid in Italy? And because of that, it's a really good place to grow things like tomatoes oh, and wheat too. That's right. And did you know Italy is famous for some foods that we really love here in Canada? And maybe you like them where you live too. And one of them is a round pie. They call it a pie, a round pie. And you put sauce on it and some toppings and cheese. And then you cook it in a hot, hot oven and you take it out and you cut it into triangles. Can I make a triangle here with my hands? Hmm? And you eat it with the pointy part first. Nom, 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 nom. What's that? Pizza. Oh, I love a pizza. In Italy, they call it pizza pie. Mmm, a pizza pie. That's right. And what else do we have here? Oh, we have something with long noodles. And you put sauce on top. And then on top of the sauce, you put some white parmesan cheese. In my house, we call it snow. Yeah, it snows right on top of our mountain of sauce. And sauce and noodles. And then we take our fork and go twirly, whirly, twirly, whirly, twirly, whirly. And you knead it up. Spaghetti. Oh, I love spaghetti. Oh, my favorite food when I was growing up. I love spaghetti. And spaghetti comes from Italy. Mm -hmm. But did you know that Italians did not invent noodles? No. You know, the ancient uh, Italian explorers went to Asia and they discovered noodles in Asia. And when they traveled back to Italy, they thought, hmm, how can we make noodles here? And they used the wheat that they already grew in Italy to make bread and they've made them into noodles. Oh, and you know what? I think people all around the world enjoy Italian style noodles. I know we do here in Canada a lot. Mm -hmm. Delicioso means delicious. <laughs> yeah. uh, in Europe where Italy is, they have a big contest every year called the Eurovision Contest. And in 1958, they submitted a song called Volare. Do you guys have wings? We go, Volare. That means to fly. Oh, e cantare. Cantare means to sing. La, 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 la. <laughs> oh, no wonder. 
my happy heart sings. Your love has given me wings. <gasps> Do you think we could try this song with our teddies? Or maybe you want to sit on your mom's lap and go for a horsey ride? <gasps> That's a great idea. Okay, come on, Teddy. We're going to go for a horsey ride with this song, and it goes like this. Ready? Clip, clop, clip, clop. We're going for a ride. Can your wings? Volare. Whoa. In a big circle. E cantare. Oh. We're going to clip, clop. No wonder my happy heart sings side to side. Your love has given me wings. Going again. Volare. Oh. Up. Down. Ah. Tickle, 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 tickle. Mwah. Are you ticklish, Teddy? Oh, yes. He's so ticklish. Should we try again? Okay, okay. Ready? Go. Clip, clap, clip, clap. We're going for a ride. Volare. Oh, y cantare. Oh, no wonder my happy heart sings. Your love has given me wings. Volare. <laughs> oh, very good. You know, this song has a bit of a story, doesn't it, Teddy? Yes, it does. It has a bit of a story. Did you know that two people wrote this song? Domenico Madungo and Franco Migliacci. And they were supposed to meet to do a writing event together. And Domenico Madungo came late. Hmm. And so Franco, he fell asleep under a tree drinking a bottle of wine. And when he woke up, he looked up on the wall and he saw these two paintings. And these are, they were murals painted on the wall. And they are both paintings by somebody named Chagall. And Chagall is a French painter. And so these two paintings were um, done by somebody as a copy and then he looked up and he saw these beautiful paintings and he saw the bird flying and he saw the person with the blue face and um, he was in do you see how this person has two faces here that's right and one of them is blue and he was inspired by these faint these two paintings and the flying instrument and he made all the words of the song about these two paintings. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. So, do you think we could try it one more time? Okay, ready? Volare, oh, y cantare, oh, no wonder my happy heart sings. Your love has given me wings. Volare. Whoa. Up. Down. Ah! Tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> oh, thank you, Teddy. Oh, yes. Mm. You're so much fun. Okie dokie. You sit right there. Thank you for doing that with me, Teddy. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> okay, very good job. Oh, I just love that song. And to learn those words, volare, to fly, and la 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 la, cantare, to sing. Yes, very good. You know, when you wake up in Italy and you see your mom in the morning, you know what you say? You say, buongiorno. Let's see, I have a little... Bit of some words here that we could learn. There we go. All right, so when you wake up in the morning, you say, Buongiorno, and that means good morning. Can you say that? Buongiorno, good morning. That's right. And then maybe your mom might ask you, Come esta? Come esta? How are you? Come esta? And then you would answer, Bene, grazie. Can you say that? Bene, grazie, which means good, thank you. Good, thank you. 
<laughs> so we say, buongiorno, come sta? Bene, grazie. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. And you know, we would say that every day, I bet, with your mom. And did you know that people have been waking up, saying good morning and having a hug with their mom and their dad, having breakfast, maybe playing with their toys, going to the market, making lunch and dinner, having naps, getting ready for bed, maybe having a bath, getting ready for bed, reading a book, singing songs, and going to sleep. Oh, not yet, not yet. For 40,000 years. Oh, 40,000. Thousand years is a really big number. That's a really long time that humans have been doing the human thing in Italy, much longer than here where I live in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Italians had a lot of time to invent some fantastic things. In fact, way long time ago in something called the 1500s, there was a family called the Medici family, and they became very wealthy merchants. In fact, they were one of the first people to rise up out of a merchant class into the aristocracy. And they were so ben, uh, so generous that they built a big theater and they had started hosting plays in the theater. And in between acts of the play, they would invite somebody called some singers called madrigal singers and the madrigal singers are very beautiful sounding music and the people loved the madrigal singers so much that somebody had another idea Ching! maybe we should write a play for the singers huh <laughs> and you know what they invented something called opera and opera is a play with singing and of course within a hundred years there were theaters in Venice, one of the big cities close by, where they started having be, having operas for the public and people could go and buy a ticket. And human beings have been buying tickets to go to the opera ever since. Even here in Vancouver, every big city has an opera house. And in fact, this amazing part is they're still doing the same operas that were invented way long, long time ago. Yes, because we, they're so beautiful and we love them. And of course, Italy is very famous for Luciano Pavarotti, the most famous tenor to come out of Italy. That is a male singer. Yes, and he's fantastic. I'm sure you could check it out, some of his music in the Jump Into Music playlist that goes along with this lesson mm -hmm, after class. Okay, very good. What else did the Italians invent? Oh, they invented something 500 years ago. Do you think we could count to five? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. What if we needed to count to 500? Hmm. Could we count by hundreds? Oh, let's try, let's try. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years ago, somebody had an amazing idea. And they invented a brand new instrument called viola de braccia. Mm -hmm. There was already an instrument called viola de gamba. And gamba means legs. And the viola de braccia was a brand new idea, a much, much smaller instrument. And you know what? I have one. I do. Can you see it? Oh, well, I see that over there is a mandolin. And a mandolin is also a very famous Italian instrument, but let's go this way. Oh, oh, that is a viola de braccia. Let's get it. Nowadays, we call this a viola. We don't, we just drop the, the braccia part. And because it's very special, because it had different kind of shape than the older instruments, it had the round shoulders like this. Mm -hmm. And it was tuned in fifths. We're really good at counting to five. Let's see if we can count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that means it's five steps apart, right? Yes, up the major scale. Let's try again. One, two, three, four, five. Again, let's try the next one. Five steps 
steps apart. And you know, I think you know that we call that a perfect fifth. And I think you know a song that uses the perfect fifth. Tell me if you know this one. You know that one? Yeah, I wonder if I could play it somewhere else on the viola. Let's try higher. It's the same. What if we do it lower? Twinkle, twinkle. Or maybe you think it's ba, ba, black sheep. Oh, it is. Or what about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know what? It's all of those songs. They're all the same song, same melody, different words. That's right. And they also all start with a perfect fifth, which is the interval, the space between these strings. That's right. The viola got a little sister called the violin or violin and which means small viola. And then it got a big brother or a little brother, I guess, but it's much bigger called violino cello. And that's the cello nowadays. And you play it between your knees like this. And they have the same tuning as the viola. And then there was another one called the violono, which was a very big bass like instrument. And eventually that one went away, it didn't survive for 500 years like these ones did. And uh, another instrument was made that we call the modern day bass, which was a cross between the viola di bracchia and the viola di gamba. And it's tuned in fourths. That's right. Anyway, so the violin and the viola are nice and small and they fit easily when with travelers. And so they went all over the world and people learned to play their own kinds of music on the violas and the violins and the cellos all around the world. And that's why they have survived so long. I think they're so loved and they're so fantastic. And this one here is a copy of a Stradivarius. It is not a real Stradivarius. It is a copy of a Stradivarius. And you can see it has beautiful wood and that gives it a fantastic sound. Yeah. All right, so let's see if I can play for you an Italian melody. This is called Minuet in Trio. And it's by Louis Boccherini and is a very famous melody. You probably recognize it from commercials and movies. Let's see how it sounds. otherwise known as the viola. Yeah. I'm going to put her back over here. There we go. All right. Very good job. Okay. So I wonder if we could do a maraca song. I would love to do a maraca song. You know, I would like to take us on a trip to a place called the Nepalese region. And you know, there is where many of the people who moved to America a long time ago in the 1930s, when after the First World War, a lot of Italians moved to the New World. And they went to America and they also went to Argentina. And when they came, they didn't have much, but they had their music. And they had the most popular music of the day. It was things that had originated in the, in the Nepalese region. Songs like, O Solo Mio, which is still popular today. And this next song is all about a mountain. A mountain in Vesuvius. Can you make a mountain with me? But did you know the Mount Vesuvius 
is not just a mountain. It's a volcano. Oh my goodness. And you know what? The people who lived in Vesuvius must have forgotten about that because they built a funicular. I'm going to show you a picture. A funicular is a tram that you can go up, 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 up to the top of the mountain and you can get a really good view from up there. And you can see this, their tram went all the way to the top. On this picture, you can't see the, the fantastic view. Must have been cloudy that day. But as you can see, it is like a train that gets pulled up to the top of the mountain. And then everybody wanted a lot of people to come and visit the funicular. And so they hired a musician to write a song. I think we could learn this song. Yeah? Okay, it's very famous. You guys have hands? We go, open, close, open, close, open, close. Yummy, yummy, yippee, yummy, ya. Yummy, yummy, yippee, yummy, ya. Funiculi, funicula, funiculi, funicula. Yippee, yummy, ya. Funiculi, funicula. And that means let's go, let's go, let's go to the top. Let's go, let's go, let's go to the top. Funicular there, funicular here, funicular there, funicular here. Let's go to the top. Funicular there, funicular here. Do you think we could go up? Uh... Oh, I'd love to go on a ride up that funicular. Wouldn't you? <gasps> Let's see if we can do it with our maracas. Two maracas, two maracas, two for you and two for me. Two maracas, two maracas, they make me so happy. Two maracas, two maracas, one for each hand. Two maracas, two maracas, together we're a big band. All right, we're going to start with open close. We sing. Yummy, yummy, yuppie, yummy, ya. Yummy, yummy, yuppie, yummy, ya. Funiculi, funicula, funiculi, funicula. Yuppie, yummy, ya. Funiculi, funicula. Should we go up? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, could we do some more moves? What about crash? We go. Yummy, yummy, yuppie, yummy, ya. Yummy, yummy, yuppie, yummy, ya. Funiculi, funicula, funiculi, funicula. Yuppie, yummy, ya. Funiculi, funicula. Let's go, let's go, let's go to the top. Let's go, let's go, let's go to the top. Funicular there, funicular here, funicular there, funicular here. Let's go to the top. Funicular there, funicular here. Ready to go up? Uh... Oh, 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 good job. Oh, do you, do you guys want to be in my band? Do you think you could play your maracas at home with me? And I'll play my ukulele? Okay, okay, let's do it, let's do it. everybody. Woohoo! Oh, that was fun. I like that song. I wish I could go on the funicular. <laughs> oh, well, it's not there anymore. But there are places in Europe that do have a funicular like that, that take you up high so you can see. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we could do one more thing. Do you know that there's a song called Mambo Italiano? Mm -hmm. And it goes like this. You guys have your scarves? The Mambo Italiano is one of those songs that came 
was uh, from the people in America. I mean, Dean Martin made a very famous song, and it was so famous that it went back to Italy and was a huge hit in Italy, and it goes like this. E mambo, mambo italiano. But we are going to do it as a peekaboo. We say, oh, where are you? Oh, oh, where are you? I see you there. Where are you? I see you here. Where are you? I see you hiding under scarves. It is so much fun. Oh my goodness. You know what? I'm going to try and play it with Teddy. I say, where are you? Oh, I see you, Teddy. Where are you? Oh, I see you at home. Where are you? Oh, I see you little birds hiding under scarves. It is so much fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> Very good job. Oh, I have another scarf. I have a polka dot scarf and I have my yellow and blue and orange scarf. Oh, oh, where are you? I see you there. Where are you? Oh, I see Teddy. Where are you? Oh, I see the little birds hiding under scarves. It is so much fun. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I love playing peekaboo. Oh, did you notice that my scarf is a special shape? You know, we call that a square. Whoa, it's a funny square. A square. And if you, that means because all the sides are equal. Now, if I fold the scarf in half, it turns into a rectangle. Look at that. And then I fold the rectangle in half and it turns into a smaller square and then a smaller rectangle and then a nice little square that we can use for next time. We go. I'm just gonna put that right there with my maracas. <laughs> Good job. The next thing I'd like to do is introduce you to one of my friends. Her name is Tarantella, and she has a special song that she likes. Maybe she'll dance if I sing it. Tarantella, Tarantella, come on, honey. Oh, very good job, Tarantella. Oh my goodness, I hope you're not too scared. You're okay? Yeah, don't worry, the kids are very nice. This is my friend Tarantella. Did you know that she is a... Well, uh, she is a wolf spider from Italy, aren't you? Yes, you are. And you know how I know that she's a spider? You know, is that she has eight legs. Do you have eight legs? You do. Do you think we could count them? Okay, let's see if we can count Tarantella's legs. There we say, we say one, two, three. Can you see that? Four. How about over here? Five, six, seven, eight. Eight legs. Wow, very good job. You have so many legs. Did you know if you ever see a bug and you're not sure if it's a spider or not, if it doesn't have eight legs, it's not a spider, is it? No, but you are. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, the Tarantella is a famous dance that people do in Italy. Mm -hmm. and, and they say that it gets the venom out. Whoa, what's that? Oh, that's as if intent. If you bit somebody, you would never bite me. No, Tarantella is a very nice spider. But sometimes it happens that we get bit by a bug. Mm -hmm. And then you do this very special dance and then on you feel better. Is that right? That's right. Is that the dance, the song? Let's try it again. Hey! Oh, very good job, Tarantella. Thank you so much for doing that dance for us. Yeah, you know, in class we're doing that dance, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you're in Vancouver, I hope that you can come to class and do the dance with us. That's right. Yes. Otherwise, you can always listen to the song on our playlist. And then you can do a dance of your own at home. Yeah. It's really fun if you count to eight a lot. We're good at counting to eight, aren't we? Yes, we are. 
<laughs> Very good job. Okay, see you later, Tarantella. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Oh my goodness. Well, we learned so many things about Italian music today. We learned that a lot of people came to America from the Nepalese region. That's right, when the songs like Funiculi Funicula and O Solo Mio were very, very popular. And they're still popular today because of the connection of the old world and the new world and family going back and forth across the big ocean and making sure that they kept the connection with their family back home and the traditions from back home. And so the Italian traditions have maintained a very strong presence here in North America and the Italian culture as it developed in North America itself influenced the, the relationship with Italian culture back in Italy, in Europe. It's so cool. I love learning about the world. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about a little bit about it with me. But I feel like I forgot to do something. Mm. Did I forget to do something? Um, oh, bubbles! Oh, I forgot to do bubbles! Oh, we should do bubbles with our friends at home, don't you think? Okay, let's do it.
right, I think it's time to catch the train. <gasps> Should we catch the train? Here we go. <laughs> well, the good fight train is coming. See you soon. <laughs> the good fight train is coming. See you soon. <laughs> the good fight train is coming. The good fight train is coming. Yes, the good fight train is coming. See you soon. <laughs> Well, I'll say bye to you at home. See you soon. Well, I'll say bye to Teddy. See you soon. Well, I'll say bye to the Bear family. And we'll all say bye to Viola. And we'll all say bye to Polar Bear. See you soon. Well, I'll say bye to everyone at the fire. See you soon. Well, I'll say bye to the little birds. See you soon. We'll all say bye to the moms, and we'll all say bye to the dads, and we'll all say bye to the nanny. See you soon, and grandmas too, and grandpas too, oh, and the teacher too. Oh, very good. And any friends and family you have visiting, bye. So good to see you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you next time here at the get together. When I'm at my house, and you're at your house, and we get together and jump into music. Get jump into music. <laughs> I think we did it, guys. I'm very excited.